So, the name of my CES is Short Distance Correctly, and I'm going to be analyzing or performing three different monologues and exploring the difference between authentically stepping into a character's shoes um, through my monologues. So, the first time I ever really felt comfortable at Millbrook was last year during Winter Weekend, actually, when I did the Napoleon Dynamite dance with everyone. Um, I feel, and then I feel like, as a result, I've stepped on the stage and it's kind of served as a really comfortable place for me, even though I hadn't really done any formal acting until this year with my improv class. So, with the Napoleon Dynamite dance, I was able to really step out of my comfort zone and find like theater and the stage is a very comfortable place for myself. So, for my CES, I thought it was only right to do some acting as I wanted to sort of push myself out of my comfort zone, but not really focus on more comedic monologues like like I sort of used to, doing comedic things. So, I knew that I wanted to do three monologues, but the whole process in my CES changed a lot. I originally wanted to do, after saying I wanted to do monologues, I wanted to do stand-up comedy and write my own uh, stand-up, but I thought that was a little bit too arduous for myself, considering I'd never written stand-up before. And then kind of transitioned again to the sort of SNL, Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live sort of thing, with having other students helping me out with that process and performing with me. But then again, I thought, you know, my CES should be purely individual. Um, like, I felt like I came to Millbrook being an individual, like I didn't know anyone. So I thought it would be best to finish out my academic career with come, like being on a stage as an individual once again. Um, in addition, I faced a lot of challenges throughout my monologues. I didn't really anticipate, considering that I hadn't really done any formal acting and had never really studied monologues and been purely improv. I didn't anticipate how hard like learning the monologues and studying and stepping into a character's shoes and sort of learning and analyzing a character's psychological, mental, and physical state. So that was quite difficult. However, these characters I feel like have become part of me in some ways and have allowed me to sort of step out of my own shoes um, from like everything that's happened this year with myself, just like being busy in like senior year and two blanks. These characters have like given me the opportunity to sort of, uh, I mean, studying my monologues and sort of a relaxing thing for me. And being on stage now isn't really, um, isn't like an incredibly difficult thing um, for myself anymore. Like, like when I first came to Millbrook, I always wanted to be an actor. I always wanted to do comedy, but I never thought like I could be standing and standing up in front of everyone. I didn't have that confidence in myself. Um, also, just like coming in here alone at Millbrook. I just didn't feel like I could do that. I felt like people wanted to appreciate who I was for like who I am as a person. Um, but in terms of my monologues, I feel like they push me out like a lot in terms of my own shoes, out of my own shoes. Um, my first monologue today that I'm performing, so actually I'm performing three different monologues and they're straight after each other, so the, uh, the props right behind me are actually going to represent a character change. So that's just me transitioning from one character to another. Um, so the first monologue that I'm performing today is, um, is from the play. Uh, I'm actually playing it right now because I'm nervous. But, um, <laughs> but the second one, I, I remember my second one, but I'll go with my third. Um, oh, it's never mind, first. Um, so my first one is from the zoo story, and it's a I'm training a character called Jerry, and the specific segment of the play is um, called Jerry and the Dog. And Jerry's an extremely lonely, crazy guy. He basically seeks attention from people in Central Park. And in the monologue, I'm basically just trying to seek attention from just random guy in Central Park who's sitting on the Central Park bench. And then my second one, which is my really only comedic one, and it's the one I felt most comfortable with. It's called uh, La Teresa, written by Sam Shepard in 1967. And I'm basically a mind tourist guide, and I'm talking about the significance of witch doctors and mind culture, and basically talking about the sacrifice of chickens, um, which help a guy become better from his illness. And then my third monologue is from Death of a Salesman, uh, written by Arthur Miller in 1949. And I'm portraying the character of Biff, who's a young man who's trying to you know, seek attention from his father. Uh, he's actually a kleptomaniac as well. And he's basically just trying to piece his life back together 
and really create a new life for himself. Um, so I feel like all these monologues have really pushed me a lot and have made me uncomfortable in a lot of ways, but it's also led to a lot of personal growth and has made me to a better actor, which is what I really wanted to be with my CS and my monologues. Um, because, you know, I picked up acting and improv and comedy when I came to Millbrook, and it's really pushed me as a person, and that's become a part of my life. So, I'm really excited for you guys to see and watch my monologues. Um, I'm super jacked up. I've been up since 5.30 in the morning. Um, this is way to do it. So, I hope you guys really enjoy them. So, I'm going to start off. Thank you. What I'm going to tell you has something to do with how it's sometimes necessary to go a long distance out of the way in order to come back a short distance correctly. Or maybe I only think it has something to do with that. But it's why I went to the zoo today. It's why I walked north. Northerly, rather, until I came here. So this dog I think I was telling you about is a black monster of a beast. An oversized head, tiny, tiny ears and eyes, bloodshot, infected maybe, and a body you can see the ribs right through the skin. The dog is black, all black, all black except for the bloodshot eyes and oh yes, an open sore on its right forepaw that is red too. And the dog is certainly an old dog and it's certainly a misused one too. And there's a gray, yellow, white color too when he bears his fangs like this. Which is what he did when he saw me for the very first time, the day I moved in. Now, animals don't take to me like St. Francis had birds hang off them all the time. I mean, I'm not a saint or anything, I'm just a regular guy. What I mean is, animals aren't different to me, like people, most of the time. People in this area speak the purest mind existing today. The language has changed only slightly since the days of the great Mayan civilization, before the time of the conquest. It's even more pure than the mind spoken by the primitive Lacedones who live in the state of Chipas. It's purer by far than the mind spoken in the Yucatan for many Spanish and Ladino admixtures have been added. In short, it's very pure and nearly impossible for an outsider to learn, although many have tried. The people of this village are very superstitious and still believe in spirits possessing the body. They believe that in some way the evil spirits must be driven out in body in order for the body to become well again. This is why you see the witch doctor beating the man. <laughs> this is to drive the evil spirits out. The firecrackers <laughs> are to scare them away. Incense <coughs> smoke or copal as it's called here, is to send the prayers up to the God. The people believe that the smoke carries the prayers to heaven. At this time, the clothes will be removed from the man in preparation for the sacrifice. The chickens, or polos as I like to call them, 
will be decapitated and their bodies all over the man, allowing the blood to drip and drop onto his back. This will allow the good spirits to enter into his body and make him well again. The clothes will be burned as it is still believed the evil spirits reside in his clothing. After this, the witch doctor will pray and then bring the heads of the polos up to the montagna and throw them into the fire and then do some more praying. Now is the time for the sacrifice. For those of you who aren't used to this sort of thing, which is all of you, I suggest you just close your ojos. But then again, you could remember that it's not a young girl like it used to be, but it's just a dumb chicken. Listen here, Willie. This is me. You know why I had no address for three months? It's because I stole a suit in Kansas City. Now I'm in jail. I've stolen myself out of every good job I've had since high school. And I never got anywhere because you blew me so full of hot air, I can never stand and take orders from anyone. That's all it is. It's about goddamn time to hurry this morning. I ran down. I had to be big boss shot. In two weeks, I'm through with it, Willie. I ran down 11 flights of stairs with a pen in my hand today. And I stopped. Do you hear this, Willie? In the middle of that office building. Do you hear this, Willie? In the middle of that office building. I saw, and I saw the sky. <coughs> I saw the things that I love in this world. The work, and the food, the time to sit, the smoke. I looked down at that pen, and I said to myself, what the hell are you grabbing this for? Why am I trying to become what I don't want to be? What am I doing in an office? Making a begging country was full of myself. And all I want is out there, waiting for me the minute I say I'm quiet. See you. Thanks, guys. Uh, any of you have questions for me? About my process? Yeah, Sam. Why did you choose those three monologues? So, I wanted uh, monologues that would ultimately highlight my acting, but also would really push me out of my comfort zone. So, my first and third monologues, when I first started them, were actually extremely uncomfortable for me, because, you know, Jerry's a crazy guy, and I don't know, that's kind of was an uncomfortable role, role at first. Like, I had a lot of trouble, like, bearing, you know, this part of the first monologue when I, like, bearing my fangs like the dog. I found that really uncomfortable at first. In my third monologue, I never really had done any acting that's like very emotional, so I feel like that pushed me on my comfort zone. But the second one, I felt like more like highlighting my traits in terms of like my comedic aspect of who I am. Uh, the others, uh, yeah. Yeah. So Guillermo asked if I tried any like different ways of portraying my character. So I tried a lot of different accents for my characters. Um, and also a lot, I tried to really utilize at first body motions, uh, or, or just like and try to kind of identify them with their like character. So for Jerry, like um, he used like this motion a lot. So that's what I kind of 
try to do with like identifying a character and like making it a part of myself. Yes, Cooper? Uh, Cooper asked what happened to a pen. I just forgot the pen. Yeah, I was probably my third monologue, but the show must go on. <laughs> Uh, did you watch any videos, or did you try to like uh, get inspiration from from any like anywhere else while you were preparing these? Um, for the third monologue that I did, my last one, I did watch some people um, do the monologue. Um, but for my first and second one, it was just purely what I felt in terms of like what I felt the character who it was and what this left turn helping me out in terms of characteristics. But I also read like character analysis, whatever I could find about um, the shows in terms of analysis as well. So I thought that helped me in terms of uh, really um, creating the best like monologue in terms of like their characteristics. Yes? Thank you all for coming to my CES.